This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is for the course NE273 Statics, and we use the book Statics by R.C. Hibbler. Today I'm going to be talking about Chapter 7.1, Internal Loadings Developed in Structural Members. Today we're going to use the method of sections, which you learned in Chapter 6, to determine the internal forces, and we're only going to look at two-dimensional load cases in this course. Uh, first, we'll do some applications. I'll describe the types of internal forces, and then I'll give you a procedure for determining the internal forces, and then we'll do some problem solving. But first, some applications. This is a fixed column support um, right here, and it's supporting this billboard. And as you can see, the member is thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. And you may be wondering why that is. Well, as we'll see, the uh, internal loadings, uh, especially the bending moments, are, are greater at the bottom than they are at the top. So to save weight and therefore money, um, we'll taper the column. Here you see a crane in a shop, and they've added an additional support uh, at this corner right here. And the reason they have done that is because uh, there's a big bending moment about this point right here. So you need some extra support to accommodate that. So that's basically what we're going to be doing, um, analyzing beams and determining their internal forces. And using those internal forces, we'll be able to design the beam, that is, pick its, um, its size. Now to design a structural member, it's necessary to know the loading action within the member. And then we want to do that to be sure the material can resist the loading. Uh, internal loadings can be determined using the method of sections. Uh, to illustrate this method, consider this cantilever beam here. If the internal loading acting on the cross section of the beam at B, or to be determined, will pass an imaginary section AA through the beam, and then separate the beam into these two segments, and then we'll draw the free body diagram of each of uh, the two segments. Now the force component in sub B that acts perpendicular to the cross-section is termed the normal force. Now, the force component V sub B, we call that the shear force. And the couple moment M sub B, we call the uh, bending moment. So this is M sub B, this is N sub B, and this is V sub B. So normal force, shear force, and bending moment. The force components prevent the relative translation between the two segments, and the couple moments prevents the relative rotation. And according to Newton's third law, these loadings must, must act in, in opposite directions on each segment. And you can see that here. On this segment, NB is pointing to the right, and on this one it's pointing to the left. Uh, the shear forces are in opposite directions, and the bending moments are in different uh, directions as well. We can determine the bending moment, the normal force, and the shear force by applying the equations of equilibrium to the free body diagram of either segment. So we can choose the right segment or the left segment. In this case, I think it's better to use the right segment because we don't have the reactions at A to deal with. Uh, we just have the two known loading forces and our internal loadings. Now in two dimensions we've shown that the three internal loading results exist as you can see here. However in three dimensions a general resultant internal force and couple moment resultant will act at the section. Uh, the x, y, and z components of these loadings are shown in this figure here. You can see that we have three bending moments, one about each axis. We have still one normal force, and we have two components of the shear force. And that's in three dimensions. However, we're not going to be doing uh, three-dimensional internal force calculations in this class, but it, it's good to know. Now, for most application, these resultant loadings occur at the uh, geometric center or centroid of the sections cross sections so they'll occur at the center of the circle in that case. So let's establish a sign convention. 
Uh, again, we're back in two dimensions now. This sign convention is arbitrarily assigned, but is widely accepted and used all over the world. The normal force is said to be positive if it creates a tension, as you can see here. A positive shear force we'll call the bend segment on which it acts to rotate clockwise. And a positive bending moment will tend to bend the segment on which it acts into a concave upward manner, so concave like this. So again, positive normal forces, they point away from the cross section, that means that we're in tension. Uh, positive shear forces cause the beam segment on which it acts to rotate clockwise. You can see that here. This would be a clockwise and this would be clockwise. And the bending moment is positive if it tends to turn the beam into a concave shape. So let's go over a procedure for determining the forces. Uh, take an imaginary cut where you need to determine the forces. Uh, then decide which resulting section is easier to analyze. If you need to support reactions, uh, draw a free body diagram of the entire structure and solve for those unknown reactions before you proceed. And then you draw a free body diagram of whichever side of the beam you decide to analyze. And then we're going to apply the equations of equilibrium to the free body diagram and solve for the internal loads. So let's do an example. Here we have distributed loading on this beam of three uh, kips per foot and it lasts over six feet into the support A. This port A looks like it's a roller. B is a, is a simple pen. And we want to know the internal forces at point C. So we're going to take an imaginary cut at point C and then choose which side of the beam we want to uh, analyze. And uh, it's probably better to do the right side since we don't have to deal with the internal loading, I mean with the distributed loading. But that means we're going to need to solve for the pin reaction at B. So here's a free body diagram of the entire frame here. Um, we have 18 kips that came from 6 times 3 and it's operating at the center of that distributed load or three feet away from the end of the beam. We have the roller reaction at A and we have the two pin reactions at B. Now if we sum forces in the X direction, it's obvious that uh, B sub X is equal to zero. Now is, if I want to get B sub Y, and that's what I want because I want to analyze you know, this, set, this side of the beam. Uh, I could sum moments about A, and that would get rid of the pin reaction at A and only be left with the one unknown B sub Y. So let's do that. So summation of moments about A is equal to zero. First, we have the 18 kip load. It's three feet away from A and it wants to rotate counterclockwise, so it's positive uh, three times 18. We have B sub Y. It tends to rotate counterclockwise, I'm sorry, clockwise around A, so it's negative, so it's minus uh, B sub Y times uh, 9. And from this you get B sub Y is equal to 6 kip. Okay, now we'll draw a free body diagram of the right section. So remember we sectioned it here. And so we have the B sub Y, the load we solve for. And remember, you have to put it in the correct direction. And we found B sub Y uh, is pointing down. So let's uh, start summing forces. We have three unknowns and three equations. We should be able to do this. So if we sum forces in the x, set that equal to zero, we find that the normal force is equal to zero. If we sum forces in the y direction, set that equal to zero, we have minus v sub c minus six. And that means that v sub c is minus six kip. Came out negative, that just means that B sub C is pointing up. So if I were to draw the free body diagram on the other side, I would have to put V sub C pointing down, and that's because of Newton's third law. And lastly, let's sum moments about C. That way we won't have to worry about V sub C. So summation of moments about C is equal to zero. Uh, so first we have the 6 kip force wants to rotate clockwise around C, so it's negative, and it's 4.5 feet away. So this is minus 4.5 times 6. And then the only thing left is the couple moment, 
and I'm going to assume it's 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 turning C clockwise, so it's negative, so it's minus N sub C. So that means that N sub C is minus 27 kip feet. Since it came out negative, the M sub C is really operating in a counterclockwise fashion. So let's do another one. Uh, here we have a beam. It's pinned at A, has a roller under it at B. It's got a pulley and uh, 400 newton tension in the cable. And we want to find the internal forces at point C. So we're going to take that cut at point C. And it'll be easier to work with the left side, right? Because you only have to worry about the pin reactions at A. You don't have to worry about any of this stuff over here. So let's do that. We do have to find the pin reactions at, uh, at A. So we're, first we're going to draw a free body diagram of the entire frame, which you see here. We have the two pin reaction forces, the tension in the cable, and the uh, normal force under the roller. So first we sum forces in the x direction, set that equal to zero. And that means that A sub x plus 400 uh, is equal to zero. So that means A sub x is minus 400 newtons. So A sub x is really pointing to the left. So we don't have to solve for B. We could sum moments about B and uh, solve for A sub y. So let's do that. So summation of moments about B is equal to zero. Uh, first, we have the 400 Newton tension in the cable, and it looks like that's 1 meter plus 0.2 meters away. It wants to rotate clockwise, so it's negative, so it's minus 1.2 times 400. Now we have AY. It also wants to rotate clockwise, so it's also negative, and it's 3 plus 2, or 5 meters away, so it's 5 times A sub y. And from this, you get a sub y is equal to minus 96 newtons. So a sub y is actually pointing down. Now we draw a free body diagram of the left sections. And we just assume these directions for the unknown loadings. And remember, you have to draw the pin reaction forces in the proper direction uh, that you got from the free body analysis of the entire beam. So first, let's sum forces in the x direction. It's equal to zero. So we have minus 400 newtons here and plus n sub c. So n sub c comes out to be 400 newtons. And remember, that's the uh, normal force. If we sum forces in the y, set that equal to zero. We have uh, minus 96 here uh, minus v sub c. So V sub C comes out to be minus 96 newtons. So V sub C is actually pointing up. And lastly, we want to get the couple moment at C. So let's sum moments about C, because that only involves one force, the 96 newton force. So summation of moments about C is equal to zero. It's equal to, now M sub C is drawn in the positive direction. So it's positive. Now 96 newtons is 1.5 meters away. It also is counterclockwise, so it's also positive. So it's plus 1.5 times 96. So M sub C comes out to be minus 144 Newton meters. And we'll do one more. Now we have uh, distributed load on the beam, the entire length of the beam. Uh, we've got a similar situation. We've got a pulley uh, with a cable, and it's the cable supported at B. We have a pin reaction at A. And that's it. We want to know the internal loading at the point C. So we're going to section the beam at point C. And then make a decision on which side of the beam is easier to work with. Well, the left side, because it only involves the pin reactions at A um, and, the, of course, the distributed load. But that means we're going to need the pin reactions at A. So we, first, we're going to draw a free body diagram of the entire frame so we can solve for that. So here we have the two pin reactions. We have the tension in the cable, and this distributed load can be resolved into one resultant force. Uh, 150 times 12 is 1800, and it operates at the center of the beam. The beam is 12 feet long, so it's 6 feet away from the left end and the right. We're going to need the tension, so if we sum moments about A, we can solve directly for the tension, so let's do that. So summation moments about A is equal to zero. 
is equal to now 1800 pounds wants to rotate clockwise it's negative and it's six feet away so it's minus six times 1800 the tension wants to rotate uh, counterclockwise around a so it's positive and it's two plus 0.5 or two and a half feet away so it's plus 2.5 times t so t comes out to be 4320 pounds Now we can sum forces in the x direction, set that equal to zero. So that's a sub x minus the tension, which we just got to be 4320, so 4320. So a sub x is equal to 4320 pounds. Lastly, sum forces about the y. Set that equal to zero. So we have a sub y minus 1800. So a sub y is equal to 1,800 pounds. Now a sub y came out positive, as did a sub x. So they're both pointing in the positive direction, right? This is x and y. So when we draw the uh, section, we've got to remember that. We've got to draw a sub y up and a sub x to the right. And here it is. Uh, it, the pin reactions that we just solved for. Now the distributed load, we're only looking at three feet of the beam here, right? So it's three feet times 150, or 45, 450 pounds, and it's operating at the centroid of that rectangle, so it's one and a half feet away. And we have the internal loadings there. So first, with some forces in the X, we only have two forces there, one of them's known, so it's equal to zero. We have the 4320 pen reaction at A, uh, plus in the normal force N sub C. So N sub C is minus 4320 pounds. So that means it's pointing to the left. Let's uh, sum forces in the Y. Again, because we have just one unknown in that direction. So we have 1800 pounds minus 450 pounds minus V sub C. So V sub C comes out to be 1350 pounds. And lastly, we want to solve for the couple moment at C. So I'm going to sum moments about C. It's equal to zero. So M sub C is drawn in the positive direction, so it's positive. We have the 450 pound load. It wants to rotate clockwise. So it's also positive, so it's plus 1.5 times 450. And lastly, we have the 1800 pound load. It wants to rotate clockwise, so it's negative, so it's minus 1800 times 3. And from this you get N sub C is equal to 47.25 pound foot. This concludes the lecture on chapter 7.1, internal loadings developed in structural members. The next video is on chapter 7.2, shear and moment equations and diagrams. See you in cyberspace.